ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Sloth Show, uh, my interview series, Chat with the Stars, and whatnot uh, has continued. And, and finally, I finally had the opportunity to talk to the guy that I've been waiting to talk to since, well, let's just say since June 22nd, we'll say, since uh, his back of his uh, release CD release party. The, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Ned Beatty. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, and I'm glad I was able to finally uh, get in contact with you. I know you've been kind of busy uh, doing, working on, on another film. Yes. Yes, uh, things kind of picked up. I, I hadn't done a whole lot uh, last year. Uh, that's why I got a chance to work on the album that I worked on. And, but uh, this year is a different story. It's a change that things seem to be coming along sort of one after another. Okay. And... Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to explain to you and explain to the people listening why I wanted to interview you in the first place. And, and it all has to go with, you know, you know, when I got a chance to finally meet you back on uh, June 22nd when you had your re- CD release party, uh, you know, I just uh, realized that, you know, you, you are a Hollywood actor and you, uh, I guess we can say you're a legend in the business and, uh, and, uh, having the opportunity to finally get a chance to interview you after waiting for quite a while, uh, gives me the, the great experience and I'm thrilled to finally get to meet, uh, one of the idols, one of my idols growing up, you know. Oh, thank you. And, and it's kind of cool because since you're, you know, around the area, since you're not, like, you know, far, farther away than you are right now, you know, it's kind of cool that you, you, I guess you can continue, continue yourself a, a local as well, kind of. Oh, sure. I mean, this is getting to be, uh, I keep threatening to stay here until it gets so cold that they have to uh, take us out with an ice pick. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I, uh, I I like it up here a lot. And it, it, it's a, it's great for us because my wife's family is here. Yeah. And a good deal of my family has uh, gone on to their just reward, so I don't have a whole lot of family to visit sometimes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, especially the older parts of my family, my own sister and my mom and my dad and all those. And yeah. So it's kind of a, it's a special place for me. And we spend like it. This year we got here in uh, we got here in the early part of May and we'll stay through October I suspect. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about Carlson? Besides, because uh, I was going to ask about Carlson uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, what about Carlson? Besides uh, the fact that you your wife's from here and whatnot, uh, is there anything else about Carlson that you enjoy? Well, uh, number one thing that comes to my mind is the fact that they're very nice golf course here. Oh yeah. Very nice nine hole golf course. I play with nine holes at least once a day. Okay. And uh, sometimes it's pretty early in the morning. A lot of people think we're nuts to go out there when we do. <laughs> Vern, Vern Porter and I play together every morning. Okay, well that's cool. That's, uh, and uh, I guess the other thing is it's, it's a small town. The small towns appeal to me. Uh, yeah. Kind of get to know everybody and yeah, it's kind of like that. Kind of different from we live in a bigger city, I suppose. And oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to get to the interview because, uh, you know, I hope I, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but we'll try to keep it, you know, hopefully half an hour or whatever, whatever we can go. And uh, basically, you know, you're, you're talking about your CD, and we're, we're going to talk about that. That's kind of going to be kind of the subject of, of this interview. But first of all, I want you to, you know, help me or whatever, explain yourself uh, about growing up. I like growing up. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a small town uh, that became a big suburb. Uh, actually, it was I was born uh, in 1937. Okay. And uh, you know, I can remember the Second World War, and I can remember the the end of it, and I can remember the soldiers coming home, and I was remembering how always I couldn't wait to be a soldier when I grew up. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to do every, anything that had to do with soldiering, and uh, so the, I grew up that way. And, and uh, like I say, a small town, a lot of church. Uh, church is a special place. It was about two blocks away. Uh, the, the schoolhouse I went to, grade school, was right across the street. So I was pretty much on foot, and I, a little bit later on, I got a bicycle. <laughs> that was a form of transportation. Oh, cool. And, and like I was saying, the, my town became a rather big suburb outside Louisville, Kentucky, over the years uh, between the 40s and the 50s, especially into the 60s. And uh, that was interesting. I got the see both sides of that coin okay know? and uh and i was always very much drawn to the countryside i used to uh, go on my way to try to get jobs on farms okay uh, when i was young so i always liked the i liked the, that that kind of was that was my favorite kind of work okay cool. farm work and uh 
I don't know. I guess I, I grew up... A lot of people have asked me when I first started working in the theater that, that, you know, what was my theatrical experience before I started being in plays. Well, the truth of the matter was, I just kind of started being in plays uh, before I ever saw one. Okay. I was kind of shocked the first time I saw it when I thought, oh, shoot, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd already been in about four or five. Yeah. But uh, I, actually, I think it was the church and the music and, and being involved in doing a lot of singing. That's really how I got started in show business. Okay. And uh, sort of went from there. Okay. I, I originally worked in the theater for about 15 years where I ever got okay. involved in film. Okay. Uh, what was your first exposure to music? Well, I, I would have to say church. Yeah. Um, you know, um, singing in church. And, 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 and my my recollection is, I can remember a few places later on, but my first time I ever heard people sing together. Yeah. The uh, first time I ever heard people talk about certain kinds of things, value things, and uh, things that were important in their life was in church. And uh, so I, I, when I think back about it, I think that church was the first theater okay. uh, for me. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, that's just what okay. it was. And, and it was very special. I liked church a lot. Yeah. When I was a kid. And uh, did you ever sing like in the choir, church choir at all? Oh, or? sure. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of got started that way, and uh, as a matter of fact, one of the songs on the album is a song called Have Thine Own Way, Lord, and uh, I used to sing that all the time because my voice turned very deep even when yeah. I was a very young man. I, it, it really changed when I was about 11 years old and got very deep. Okay. And that was one of the few songs in the hymnal that I could sing in the key that was written in, in the hymnal. Okay. So I've been singing that one for a long time. <laughs> and that happened to be the uh, first track on your CD. Yeah, you know, I didn't plan it that way, but uh, the fellow who was producing it uh, put it in front. I said, how come you put that one in front? He said, that's the best one you did. I said, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, cool. And uh, on your CD, you got great 12 tracks and, uh, of uh, stuff that has been redone by many other uh, artists as well. But, uh, oh, sure. But uh, you, you just got a niche for... Uh, Making your own brand of uh, of uh, gospel music. Uh, did you uh, in, in your collection here? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, yeah. Did you uh, write any tunes at all? Like add any of your own? No, there was one new tune on it, and it was the bass player uh, in the band. Uh, it was basically a uh, bluegrass band yeah. that we used, and uh, which kind of fit in with music I liked a lot when I was yeah. growing up, and. Uh, we never had many instruments in church besides the piano and organ, but uh, I always like the sound of bluegrass with okay. uh, gospel music. Okay. But the bass player wrote the one tune we have, uh, Jesus Built a Bridge to Heaven. Okay. One of my favorites on that. Act number five, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, I guess you can say, all in all, as many uh, music uh, genres as there are, uh, that bluegrass, gospel, or anything that has to do with bluegrass or gospel would probably be a, a big favorite of yours. Yes, yes. I, I got to work. The first time I had a, a paying job as a singer yeah. uh, was in Berea, Kentucky. Now, Berea, Kentucky is on in the foothills to the Appalachian Mountains. It's on the western side of the, the mountains. Okay. And it was quite a, uh, quite a place, especially for folk music. And uh, we literally, we did a show at night, which was about the beginnings of the Civil War, because in that particular area, there were people who were abolitionists were living in one county and the very next county over they were slave owners yeah so they sort of had their own private little <laughs> civil war right there near Berea okay and uh, I that's the uh, first time I ever got paid to be a singer and it's also the first time I ever did the, did the acting okay and uh, I used to make a joke out of the fact that the reason I got to say some lines in this historical pageant <laughs> was the fact that I could talk loud because we were in an outdoor theater. Yeah. Uh, so. now, okay, now, now talk about acting now, because uh, I'm going to ask you about that, of course. Uh, yeah. How did you get into acting? Uh, did you ever consider a career of music instead? Well, I think it happened in that period. Uh, the first the first two summers after I had basically left school, 
Uh, I, I had one year in college, and then I decided I better uh, get a job. <laughs> so I started working as a, in the daytime, I worked as a supermarket butcher. Okay. I was an apprentice butcher, and uh, then I would do, uh, after the first year I did that, uh, next year I sort of got interested in acting from being in this outdoor drama, and uh, I had a small part, and then I got a got to understudy a bigger part, and the second year I went there, I ended up playing the biggest you know, kind of character part in the whole piece. Uh, uh, so I, I was, it just sort of, I got just sort of moved in that direction, and uh, I really liked acting, and acting seemed to come fairly naturally okay. to me. And uh, I, after that, I just started looking into it, and uh, even though I was working, you know, as a butcher in the daytime, I was doing amateur theater at night. Okay. And then the very next year, after those two years, uh, I got my first job uh, acting in a summer theater. Oh, a stock yeah. company. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, it kind of went bang, bang, bang along like <laughs> that for me. Uh, but, like, how, how did you, like, find a niche for it? Like, is this something that you thought of, like, uh, you know, back in the day when you were growing up, uh, just something that you uh, thought, well, hey, you know, well, or, like, was there something that you watched on TV or something that you... That got you really into acting? Well, you know, it's funny. I think we all are, are sort of interested in acting on, on one level or another because we the only we find actors that we really like and we like to see them play yeah. in movies and stuff. And most of what I had seen had been movies, to tell you the yeah. truth. And uh, when I first started acting, it took me a little while to get used to the fact that, uh, number one, you know, people had to hear you and they had to hear what you were saying because yeah. the play gets carried by the, by the language, basically. Yeah. Whereas uh, films can, uh, you can say as much with the look as you can with the lines. <laughs> so yeah, I just, uh, I, I just kind of, I, I don't know how to tell you. I just got into it. I okay. really, I really liked it, and the singing just kind of started dropping off, uh, and I did less and less of that, yeah. and more and more of the acting. I was going to mention too. Uh, 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 this is a past interview that I've done. If you get a chance to listen to my show. Uh, I did an interview with uh, Jimmy Valiant, uh, uh, the boogie woogie man. He's a uh, yeah. pro- he's a professor wrestler. Anyway, uh, or I should say, retired professor wrestler. And he said, uh, and he told me that uh, when I did the interview with him, that uh, in one of your movies called Nashville, that he uh, actually owns one of the uh, props or whatever uh, from the movie. Oh really? Which one did you I say? I think it's like uh, is it like a car or something like that, or, or some little. Some little prop or some car that he has in a museum or something like that. Well, it could. Uh, there's plenty of yeah. There's plenty of stuff in that movie. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Uh, like uh, something that the hippie was using or something like that. I don't. I don't even remember. But he. Oh, he could. He could have gotten a tricycle. Yeah, too. I think that's what it was. That's yeah, a tricycle motor, motorcycle was quite. Yeah. Um, oh shoot. Yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the actor. This is stupid. Um, <laughs> Who who was the guy that played the the, the thing uh, the, uh, the the thing about the ant? Um, Are you talking? Oh, come on. Which ant movie now? Cause well, it was a. Is this, mm-hmm. is this an older older? Yeah, now it is. It's going to be about fifteen twenty years old now. Okay. He, he, I saw him recently, and he looks great. Okay. I asked him if he made a deal with the devil because he looked exactly the same age as he did when we did in Nashville. Okay. Oh uh, shoot! I'm gonna. I, I'm almost the same as almost coming up. <laughs> it's not quite coming there. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, did, I can see him as well. No, but he wrote that. He wrote that. Okay. Uh, he was the hippie character. He wrote that. Okay. Tri- the, the tricycle. Oh, well, maybe, maybe if it's something that a person can look up on the internet, moviedatabase dot com or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll find him. I'll, 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 I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll find out. Maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll mention it after the interview after I get the information or whatever. <laughs> That's great. That'd be good. Thank okay. you. But I, I just figured I'd let you know that that uh, he he told me that he owns the tricycle as we figured out that yeah. in that movie, which is kind of unique. Uh, it's very unique. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you were aware of that or or, or what you are uh, aware of after you get done with a movie or whatever. But uh, do you ever get a chance to own like any of the uh, props or at all uh, from certain no, movies? You know, funny thing about me, I'm not a saver, and I, I guess I learned very early on in in, in uh, working as an actor in the theater. Yeah. But I moved around so much, I had to go here from here to there to get a job, and you're always looking for some place to go work. Yeah. And I moved so many times and, and lived so many places that after a while, I, I had a rule of myself. I had a 
I had been in the Army for six months. I was a reservist, an okay. Army reservist. I've been in the Army, so I had my Army duffel bag. If, if, if an item would not go into my Army duffel bag, I no longer owned it. Okay. So that's the way I traveled for <laughs> about 15, 20 years of my life. Okay. And uh, I'm still a little bit that way. People laugh at me when I go and take a trip. They say, how many are they going? I said, I don't know, three or four weeks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got an overnight bag, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, uh, you were talking about the theater and, and uh, whatnot. And, and a lot of people know that uh, theater acting like, and plays are, are way, way different than doing a, a movie. I don't know if they're easier or harder, but uh, how long have you been uh, in the theater acting and doing plays and such? Well, I did about uh, I did about 15 years before I ever got involved in film. Okay. And then I did a lot of film work, and then I've done about two, two or three years Lately, uh, over the last ten years, I've done about two, three year more year, years in the theater. Sure. I think it's a little more difficult. Yeah. Um, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. I I like both a lot. Uh, I I feel like you can bring a lot of what you know from acting in the theater to film. Sure. And I'm not sure it it, it works quite as well the other way. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I, a lot of a lot of really good film actors are really good theater actors. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I think this, I think the theater makes you be a little bit more open. And uh, if you'll notice, sometimes film performances are pretty much subdued. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if they have to be that way. Okay. That makes any sense. But uh, like when you were doing theaters and whatnot, uh, uh, have, are there any uh, certain plays? Because I'll be honest, I I, I looked up uh, uh, some information about you, and I I know some, uh, I had some pictures for you from our earlier plays, and, and yeah. even now, uh, are there any uh, certain ones that you uh, have enjoyed doing and would do again if you had the chance? <laughs> well, the the one play that kind of followed me around a little bit. I was first in it when I was 21 years old, and the play was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Okay. And I played uh, the part of Big Daddy. Okay. Uh, which uh, I have since done. I did it once when I was 21 years old. I yeah. did it again when I was 64 years old, and then I did it when I was 65 years old. <laughs> so. Uh, that was that's a wonderful play. Yeah. And it's uh, it's uh, for someone from the south. It's a little the, the language is so good and so uh, the rhythms are so southern okay. that if you feel them and understand them, they're just they're a joy to do. Um, I don't know. If there's many other things that I would really want to do again. Okay. I I like doing something new, like yeah. most everybody. Yeah. I, Shakespeare always. I would. You would always go back to Shakespeare sure. if you had a chance. Um, I never got to play. I only got to play Falstaff once, and it was not in one of his uh, more well-known plays. Yeah. The play is called The Merry Wives of Windsor. And supposedly he wrote it simply because Queen Elizabeth loved the character Falstaff so much. Okay. That they sort of threw this silly little comedy together. Okay. Just to please please the Queen, but uh, <laughs> I, but I. I, yeah, Shakespeare. There's one play I've been in, but I haven't played uh, the old man in it. Yet. Yeah, is uh, King Lear. Okay, and uh, that's uh, that's an interesting one because uh, it's really hard to do right. Okay, and I don't know whether I could or not. But yeah, uh, it's a difficult play. Okay, well, that's great to to hear that uh, you've had even you as a legendary actor and whatnot. Uh, have had a few favorites that you uh, have enjoyed doing in your career, and uh, now, now talk about your career as a singer, kind of switching guns a little bit. Uh, yeah. uh, about your CD, what what got, what gave you the idea or, or to do a CD? Well, actually, I think it came from uh, my friend Larry Bastian, who's a very well-known country songwriter. Uh, he, he when Garth Brooks was at his heyday, uh, Larry wrote quite a few songs with him and for him. Yeah. He wrote uh, Rodeo, and he wrote uh, Unanswered Prayers, okay. and some of the really big hits that Garth had. And uh, okay. so he and I have been friends for some years because we lived together uh, close to each other in California. We live up in the, in the Sierra Nevadas up above the San Joaquin yeah. Valley. 
And uh, I had done some, well, not favors for him, things I really enjoyed doing, but he used to get some other songwriters together and we used to do the songwriters' concerts. And one time we did one, we have a big meadow yeah. up where we lived, and we got about three or 4,000 people out there. And I emceed this concert, and the different uh, songwriters came and sang some of their songs that they had written. And yeah. uh, it was really a, a great evening, and, and these guys were selling their CDs. Well, Larry uh, felt really terrible because I had uh, done the emceeing on this <laughs> and uh, I didn't have a CD. So he he started he, he started bothering me, but he says you got you, you need a CD. I said I don't need a CD. I said I said I'm I'm not gonna do this all the time. I said I'll I'll do it if you ask me to or something like that. But yeah. I'm gonna be doing. It. So he kind of kept after it. And finally one night we were at his place and we used to get together and he had a studio kind of place downstairs where we'd get together and sing sometimes after dinner. And we got one night we got to singing hymns and he commented on how well I knew all the hymns. I said, Yes, I said, I did that for years and years. I said, That was all my upbringing. So yeah. that's all he needed to hear. So he, he set the whole thing up. Yeah. I've got uh, one of his very good friends in Nashville who's an incredible producer and he and this guy, they co produced it and Okay. He just told me we're gonna do it and I said That's I said, sure what the heck. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> But I'm awfully glad I did. It's been a real, uh, I know it, I, it sounds terribly religious yeah. to say this, but it's been a real blessing. Yeah. I mean, it really has been. I've enjoyed it so much. And, okay, well, that's that's interesting. A lot, a lot of people don't didn't know that. I, I know I didn't know that for sure. That's why I figured I'd ask that. And uh, is yeah. this something now that people can see you do in the future, or are, would you be willing to go on tour if you had the chance, or... Actually, what's interesting, I don't know how much of that sort of thing I can do because I think that's a young person's game. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of hard work. Yeah. Uh, I love being in front of an audience. As I, you yeah. know, the audience gives you as, obviously as much as you give them. So I, that's I, that's a, that's yeah. That's the thing. I, uh, you can you can never say no forever no. to that. I mean, you got you have to do it. But on the other hand, yeah, I've already thought of some new songs I really like to do. Uh, yeah. I used to sing a lot of folk songs. I okay. like to do something which is, uh, there's a lot of old Kentucky folk songs that a lot of people never have heard. Yeah. And uh, I would love to do some of those. Oh, cool. I and uh, I don't know if you ever had the chance to listen to my show at all. It's a, a Tuesday night gig here at the uh, Pioneer 90. And, and my, my stuff's kind of like yours, kind of in a way. Kind of stuff you never heard of, you know, deep tracks or whatever. And, and yeah. uh, you know, just it's hard to find music and whatnot. That's, that's what I think nowadays is interesting, you know. Uh, yeah. If you can find stuff that you you never done before, or never played before, well, go for it. You know exactly. Well, you know, I I was real lucky to find out I I had done a, a recording of Sixteen Tons. Okay. For a friend of mine who was putting together uh, some CDs about the coal mining area of yeah. uh, of where the part of the world I come from. Yeah. And uh, so I had done this thing with the fellow that ran the studios in his own home. It was a really nice studio down. Uh, and the San Fernando Valley, just outside of Los Angeles. Yeah. And I said, uh, our, our, I asked him, was I there? I said, do, do you know of any place that uh, where you know people who aren't particularly well known in, in the music business are they don't want to have a record label or they, uh, where they sell their music on uh, the internet? Yeah. And he didn't miss a beat. He said, CD baby. <laughs> and I thought he was joking. Yeah. I thought no, that's a kind of silly. But I looked into. It. I got to tell you. I have sold quite a few albums there. Yeah. And that's really... What they do, and they don't specialize in any particular kind of music. What they specialize are new musicians and young musicians and yeah. people who have not been in the business before. And they they make help you make your album available. Okay. So I can't say enough about that. CD Baby is... I think it's cdbaby.com. Okay. And boy, is that, uh, I have found some stuff on there that I, I I'll tell you what, it, you get hooked on it after a while, and you start buying stuff because you think, I didn't, there was this one young woman who sang only er, early Irving Berlin songs yeah. on this one album. That was wonderful. Oh, I got, it is. I, I've got it, I mean, I bought it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah great. It, well, it, and, and I'll tell you the other thing that's kind of kind of interesting about yeah. it 
is how many albums they sell. There's one guy that for over a year now has been selling almost a quarter of a million copies every month. Jeez. Just one guy? Yes, one guy. He's a folk singer. <laughs> and I like his stuff. It's 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 pretty you know, it's pretty simple and yeah. pretty straightforward. But I thought, you know, come on, you gotta be kidding. But no, he 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 was sell uh, like two hundred and three hundred thousand every oh, month. Oh wow. Is this something now that you're doing on your, for your CD too, like, uh, yeah. as a way to promote? Because I think, uh, well, I went to your website, uh, magnetingthings.com, yeah. and uh, yeah. listened to a few samples. There you go. It. And uh, is that kind of how you got hooked up with uh, that? Yeah, well, they, they actually, that's the other thing. Once you start doing business with them, they ask you how you feel about your own home site or would you like to build a home site. Okay. Well, I have been working on one. I keep, I kept telling myself, you know, the, the people could do this for you, but I couldn't figure out why you couldn't do it for yourself. Yeah. And it turns out that they got a perfect program. That you just, you make some choices, and they, they tell you what kind of information to put on. It's basically built around people who would be selling music. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that's the way I built the home site. Oh wow. That, that, that's another part of their program. Yeah. And of course, I've got a you know you you have a link yeah. from the home site to, to the selling site, and yeah. every CD they have has its own uh, web page. So anyway, you put it, uh, CDBaby.com has really helped you out in promoting your CD. And well, I, I, I tell you what, you can, <laughs> the first time the first time I emailed them and said, you know, this is sound, this sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell me what I need to do to get started. So they email me back, uh, I know with, within le- less than one day. Yeah. They email me back and the first, the first thing they say to us is, Ned Beatty, we love you already. <laughs> <laughs> and they have this kind of wonderful way of encouraging you, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was special. I, I know there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of young people, you know, that are making music. Yeah, and they really need a chance. They need a chance for some people to listen to it and see if those, and see if those people want to have a copy of what they do. Yeah, and this is a way. I think it's like well, the the cost is so low. Yeah, it, it, I mean, like, when you think in terms of everything, how much we pay for everything nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I, you can get on CD Baby for less than. Uh, a half a tank, tank of gas. Oh, okay. I mean, it's a big that company. simple. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah. Okay. Well, and you you do a little bit of the work, and you yeah. tell them who you are, and you tell, you know, the people who might be interested in buying your music who you are. Okay. Where you've been. And I'm sure once you told them who you were, I'm sure they kind of freaked and like, oh, my God, Ned Beatty's actually... Well, <laughs> <laughs> actually, they, I, I must say, they've been very... They, they've been very nice to me, but yeah. I kind of checked up on it. And I'll tell you, that's the way they treat everybody. Okay. Uh, all the people who started it, most all the people who work on it, are all musicians themselves. And it's a little bit like, you know, this is something that's, that has the idea behind it is the fact that people need to be able to get their music yeah. out to the public. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I mean, that, that, that explains a lot about your CD and how you got started and... Uh, Oh, yeah. The website. And uh, uh, let's see. Uh, first of all, I want to well, thank you. Well, we're not quite done yet. i still got a few questions left to ask you. I want to thank okay. you for taking the time to let me interview you. And uh, everybody here at Pioneer 90 uh, says hi. Oh, good. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, from, moving on from your, your uh, music career now to your uh, acting career, because uh, 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 I, I realized that you were on the first two Superman films. Uh-huh. And uh, now with the, uh, the, the new one coming out, do you think right. that uh, the Superman movie of today is just as good as the one uh, prior, the ones that you were on with Christopher Reeve, or or wh- what are your thoughts on that? Well, I haven't seen it. Okay. So I have I have talked to people about it. I've talked to people who haven't seen it. Okay. I've heard lots of different things. Okay. Um, I, I tell you the truth, I, I'm... I'm probably going to be a little bit lazy about seeing it. Yeah. Uh, unless, it, until it comes up to maybe watching it because it would be the possibility of, of Oscar nominations. Yeah. Because I do get to watch films. I, I get my own uh, DVDs of those. Yeah. Uh, I may wait till then. Uh, I'm, 
Uh, I, I think the easiest way to say it is just say it straight out. I don't think I want to see it now because of the way I felt about Chris Reeve. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i not saying we were close friends or anything. I knew him bef- long before we ever did the Superman. I had uh, been in a movie with him. He was just a, you know, he was playing a tiny, tiny part. And uh, I got to be friends with him on that. And it was a Navy movie. He yeah. played a young ensign. I was playing a, a kind of a mean old... Uh, uh, what do you call him in the Navy? Uh, uh, not, not a sergeant. Uh, okay. Lieutenant? Uh, yeah. Or no, not lieutenant. No, no, no. I don't even know. I, I know. They're chief petty officer. Okay. okay. So I was a chief. a chief. Yeah, they call him chief petty officers in the Navy. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I, had, I, I thought Chris was a very special person. Yeah. Uh, so that would be a little difficult for me right now. Okay. Uh, but uh, I hope it's wonderful. I mean, you yeah. know, it's, it's great stuff and then and I'd love for people to, to I would, the first one with him was so good. I was so happy to be in it. <laughs> it was so wonderful. I, I I don't think any of the other of them ever really kind of struck me nearly as. Yeah. That first one was uh, amazing. And how about the second one? Because I know you were on the second one as well. Well, I, not, not as much. Okay. I didn't have a stronger feeling about that. Uh, I had, well, I had, I, I like Margot Kidder very much too. Yeah. But I, I had more of a, more of a relationship with, with Chris. Yeah. Christopher and, and, uh, he was quite amazing. Yeah. Do you it, it was very, you know, his dad was a classics professor. Yeah. At an Ivy League school. Okay. I mean, he came from a very kind of, if you excuse the expression, a kind of duty background. Yeah. And uh, I think it was always difficult for him. I think he was always trying to prove himself as worthwhile to yeah. his family. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite ready to see the new movie. <laughs> okay. Well, I just figure, you know, I figure I'd mention that because uh kind of goes into a good segue or comparison because you were in the first two, and then, of course, yeah. now they're redoing it. And uh, I've seen little previews for it, and I don't know. I, I like the classics better. I like the, the old the ones that you were in better. I, yeah. I, that's my opinion anyway. Other people can take it any way they want, I guess. Well, I, I've heard different things. I've heard some people say they just loved it. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a couple of people say that they 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 felt like they the they, the actor they got to play Superman. Yeah. Uh, I heard one person say they think they tried to make him be too much like Chris Reed. Yeah. And Chris was pretty special. Person. Yeah. Uh, he was not. You didn't meet somebody like him every yeah. time you walked around the locker. <laughs> okay. It was different. Okay. Uh, okay, well, just with the hype of the Superman, or I don't know if it's not really much of a hype now, but uh, about a month ago, I tell, you, I tell you this, you know, everywhere you go, stores or whatever would have promotions, and I, I would oh, see yeah. your DVDs, you know, the first two would sell for like five ninety nine a piece, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to, back to your interview, back to about you, uh, do you think, uh, with the films that you've been in and, and the films that some of your friends have been in and whatnot, uh, do you think the films of today are much different than the films of yesterday, or do you think it's about the same? Uh, to tell you the truth, it's hard for me to tell. My eyes have not uh, have been getting... I've got a uh, the type of eye disease which doesn't get better. Okay. It sort of gradually gets a little worse. Yeah. Uh, it's a type of macular degeneration, but it's called cone dystrophy. And, okay. Uh, so I'm not sure how well I see films. Uh, okay. As a matter of fact, I've got a pretty special setup at home so I can almost get my nose right on the screen. Yeah. Uh, to watch them when I watch them for the, you know, voting for the Academy Awards. And, yeah. Um, I... I don't think I like them as much right now as I have for a while. Um, I, I think I was involved in a few of the things which maybe brought on a lot of the quick cuts and yeah. some of the stuff I was involved in television. Uh, we liked Homicide an awful lot. Yeah, but I yeah. think it, it got people kind of moving in one direction. They don't seem to be able to stop. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that's a very uh, literal <laughs> <laughs> literal way of saying sure, movies sure. can't stop anymore they're no, just moving no. all the time you know and, and I find that I, on top of being older uh, just my eyes I can't care I okay. can't watch stuff okay 
But so I don't think they're I don't think they're as good, but I don't know if I'm, I'm a very good judge. Okay. Well, I, I mean, more like uh, on the lines, like uh, I'll say, you talk about having eye disease. Like maybe before you you got that, like way, like when you when you were able to make a comparison, like yeah, uh, that's what I kind of mean. But uh, but yeah, I I kind of do agree with you. I mean, the movies of today are good, uh, and they will continue. But uh, you know, I don't know. I think nowadays in the film industry, and this is just my opinion, uh, kind of run out of ideas. You know, in a way. Yeah. Because they've done everything they could possibly do, you know. I, I think the 70s uh, are going to be hard for anybody to touch in film. Yeah. What was special about the 70s, a lot of people on the outside don't know, was that the 70s were a time when uh, movie scripts turned out to be scenarios. Yeah. Uh, they were not word for word what you were going to say. And, yeah. And there was a lot of improvisation in the 70s. And the thing about the movies then was the life in them is very lively. Yeah. The people are very alive. Yes. And the characters are alive. And I think that we've gotten way, way away from that. Yeah. Uh, we're back to... We just... We, we, matter of fact, we don't even know how to... Impro young actors don't seem to know how to improvise anymore. Okay. We're just sort of... Strange. Yeah. <laughs> now, now with you, uh, uh, are there any up and coming projects that you're working on? Well, I've got one that's sort of in the can, and they're doing post production on. It's called The Walker. Okay. Uh, and uh, I suspect it'll be out sometime during this next year. Okay. And then one I'm working on right now, I have to go to Band of Vancouver on it again next week. Okay. I've been up there ten days already. Going to go back. Uh, it's called Shooter. Okay. And it's about uh, it's about a sniper. Yeah. And it's pretty heavily political because you start off thinking maybe that it's going to be a, a version of the JFK yeah. assassination. Okay. And it turns out to be something more insidious. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think that's going to be pretty good. Mark Wahlberg is in Oh, okay, and, cool. And and uh, I get to act with Danny Glover, which is oh, wow. a great deal of pleasure. That's a uh, couple of, well, Mark Wahlberg, yes, he, he's a, I, I see a lot of his films. That, yeah. He, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know him personally, like you probably do, but I, you know, wow. Is this now the one that you filmed in Canada, the shooter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna be. He, uh, he's. I'm impressed with him. I think he's gonna be real good in it. It's a really. It's a really good hero part. Okay. I mean, this is a real hero guy. And, and uh, I think it's gonna turn out. That part's gonna turn out extremely well. Okay. I. Uh, I'm kind of. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of. I have kind of good hopes. I have good hopes about both these movies. And okay. then. Uh, uh, there's another movie which possibility with. Uh, I'm kind of excited about it because Mike, Mike Nichols is directing it. Okay. So I'm, uh, I don't know whether that's going to happen yet or not, but I'm mentioning it only because maybe it'll bring me luck. <laughs> hey, who knows? Hey, you never know. Luck. You never know. Okay. Uh, what was I going to say, now? Uh, uh, with these up-and-coming two films that you're working on right now, anyway, uh, uh -huh. any uh, well-known uh, movie production, uh, like, uh, is it by Warner Brothers, Columbia Pictures? Well, Paramount is doing the one uh, which is called uh, uh, Shooter. Okay. And the one we did before, The Walker, um, I'm not, I don't, I think that's the independent. I don't think, okay. you know, that's good. actually... Uh, Sundance, uh, Sundance stuff, kind of? Like no, no. I, you know, one of the things you should probably know about movies right now, which if you haven't sort of, yeah. studios don't make many pictures anymore. Okay. Uh, when a studio does make a picture, it tends to complicate it. Okay. Uh, the one we're doing right now is a little bit more complicated by the studios. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, independent films, uh, it, did you know that of the five movies that were up for Academy Awards this last year, Four of them were independent films. Really? Yeah, only one of them started in a studio. Huh. And it was the one that won, and I did not think it was the best movie. Well, I, I do, in a way, kind of follow independent films once in a great while. Because uh, yeah. uh, I believe, you know, 
just there as Jason Wright when I was telling me because I interviewed him. That's uh, Ivan Reitman's son, just in case you uh-huh. knew that already. Uh, he did a movie called Thank You for Smoking, and uh, it's a more based on like big tobacco and all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I haven't seen that yet. I want to see it. Is it good? I, I haven't see seen it. I've seen the trailer for it, so they got. Oh well, shoot! Of, we better get a copy and see. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know if it's out on DVD yet. I think it's still in theaters. I, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, he he yeah. doesn't really explain a whole lot about it, of course, but uh, yeah. But uh, no, uh, no, I do follow the independent circuit because I believe too, you know that, you know, because they do work basically on the merit of your work. You know, they they, they uh, it's an art, and a lot of people you know have forgotten that. You know, even yeah. the, even the stuff that you're doing now, you know, or even the stuff that you did in the past, yeah, uh, it's, it's it's an art, and people don't, you know, people look a lot of people say, oh, it's just a movie, you know, yeah. like whatever, you know, but yeah. but you know. A lot of people don't realize, you know, that it, with all the work and, and, and merit or whatever that goes into it, you know, it, it helps build uh, why people should be interested in stuff like this. But uh, yeah, when, they, when they're good, they can be really, really good. And, and <laughs> they're, not, they're not good a lot, you know, that people will never forget, you know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, uh, just a couple more questions here. I recently uh, uh, figured out, or, or I guess I kind of knew this uh, a while now, uh, you recently, back in March, uh, won a River Run Award. How does, oh, yeah. feel, how does it feel to be uh, awarded such a great honor like that? It's nice. It's nice. And it's especially good if you can help out on a movie that you're that you're helping to publicize. Yeah. We have a movie called Sweetland, which was made here in Minnesota. Yeah. And it's very good. Okay. And I, I like it so much that I would do just about anything within reason to help it along. And it's it's now got a distributorship. And it's going to be starting to be in theaters very soon. It's okay. Probably going, to, it's probably going to start in an art house in New York City. Okay. And then it'll open slow. Uh, yeah. I really hope people get to see it. and uh, Maybe they'll get a Galaxy Square Theater here in Thief River, hopefully. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm, uh, I, I started off the summer working on that, and I yeah. finally kind of backed away from it because... It was a little complicated because it's you know it's not my film. Yeah. It actually belongs to people who paid for it. Yeah. And uh, they're actually most everybody's a Minnesotan. I'm yeah. Kidding. The whole thing was done here in the state and uh, financed here in the state. Which part in Minnesota? Well, mostly around the cities. Okay. But uh, we actually filmed it in uh, Montevideo, which is okay. southwest. Yeah. But I really felt like the whole time we were doing it, it was more like Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. It, because it was. Uh, it was mostly Norwegian. Okay. As a Norwegian community, a little Norwegian church, you know, and Norwegian farmers. And yeah. uh, the whole story is about a girl who comes to marry one of the young Norwegian bachelors. Okay. And uh, she turns out to be German. And sure. And starts a lot of trouble. Okay. But it's a wonderful love story, and it's just... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm really high on it. I oh, really want people to see it and enjoy it, because... Uh, and is that more like an independent film too, or is that yeah, definitely okay? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, and a uh, one, one, couple more things here. Uh, have you, or are you, ever going to come up with a book about your career? Like Probably a book. not. How you like? Well, just because I'm too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could come up with a publisher, maybe, and uh, you know, or have yeah. somebody help you out or whatever. Well, I've got. Uh, I've got some writers in my family, uh, and my, my, my kids, so I'm right. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I, it, it, it doesn't occur to me much because I used to love to read. Um, I've been, since the eye trouble started on, I guess over the last 10 years or so, yeah. uh, my capacity to read has just sort of gone down, so yeah. I don't love reading so much anymore. Yeah. I like to listen to books, so I, I, okay. I, I like to find you know really good book readers, and, <laughs> and uh, I love to I love to listen to recorded books. Uh, no, I am not anything about a book. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, a couple one last thing too. Uh, yeah, now that I've been doing interviews with people and whatnot, and hopefully if you listen, you'll get a chance to hear what who I've been interviewing. Uh, uh-huh. If you ever can help me out, or you know how to get, get in contact with me, uh, All right. if you ever know anybody. Whether they're famous or or they were famous or or just you know anybody that you know would would be more than happy to be interviewed by right. me, Sean Sloss or Frankie Sloss here on the Pioneer Night for a while, just please let me know. Okay. And 
Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to let me interview you. And then one last thing, what I always have people do, and you'll find this out after you tune in tomorrow or today or whatever, if you tune in tomorrow, uh, I always have people give me a station ID. And what that okay. means is uh, uh, you, you say who you are, yeah. and you say who you listen to, and what the station is. Okay, give me my exact line. Uh, it's, I will, it's, okay. This is Ned Beatty, and I'm listening to... The Frankie Swanson Show. Is, tell me your last name again. Okay. All you gotta do is say, this is Ned Beatty, and yeah. you, or Hollywood legend, Ned Beatty, and you're listening to the Frankie Swanson, that's S-L-A-W-S. Swanson, I got it, yeah. okay. On Pioneer 94.1. <laughs>